All right, guys, I'm here at NAB 2023. And of course, I'm here at the DJI booth. They are flying the Inspire 3 right behind me. I'm gonna have Ferdinand Wolf, probably the guy who's had the most experience of flying the Inspire 3, talk to you guys a little bit about some of his top features of the new drone. Hello and welcome at the DJI booth uh, at NAB 2023. Uh, my name is Ferdinand Wolf. I'm a senior product manager at DJI and the creative director for DJI Europe. And today I'll try to run you through the highlights of the Inspire 3. There are actually so many new upgrades and features, but um, I'll try to run you through the highlights from like a pilot and user perspective. And yeah, well, let's start right away with the aircraft body. So um, we try to streamline everything, integrate the body parts. As you can see, we have the FEV camera now integrated into the aircraft body. So it's not external anymore on I2. It also has like a larger low light capable sensor so you can basically fly it at light, uh, which helps to navigate a lot. And it has a low latency image transmission. So basically you can fly the Inspire 3 FEV style. We also have 360 degrees obstacle avoidance, uh, which helps a lot, even if you're a professional pilot, because you can set it to a mode where it just puts out acoustic and visual warnings and does not automatically stop. So if you're backing up um, to prepare your shot, you get close to a wall, you know exactly how far you are away. It's basically like the park assistant of your car. We still have uh, batteries that are under 100 watts. Uh, it's the new TB51, which have higher voltage uh, and better uh, output power. Uh, they're under 100 watts, so you can still take the whole aircraft and the batteries on board of an aircraft and travel with it. With it which is uh, very, very important. And we also maintained um, the small, lightweight and compact form factor, factor of the Inspire series. Basically, you can take it everywhere. One of the hugest, like biggest upgrades is the main camera. We have a full frame sensor now with 8.1K resolution and up to 14.7 stops of dynamic range. And it's also a dual native ISO sensor, with the lower base ISO of 800 and upper base ISO of 4000. So it's now very capable, even in low light. It matches up with the very best of the um, industry standard cameras. For an all integrated drone, it's super important um, that it's accepted on a high end film set. Uh, with this camera, it's no problem to match up with uh, the Aries and Reds and Sonys on high-end film sets. We also introduced a new lens, the 18mm lens, because this is now full-frame sensor compared to the X7, which was Super 35. Uh, the 16mm does not work anymore because it was a Super 35 uh, lens. The 18mm basically replaces that, so we still have four lenses, and there will also be a new telephoto lens coming out later. There's also a huge upgrade in the remote controller. We're basically using uh, the remote controller that we introduced with the M30, our enterprise drone. So it's weatherproof, very rugged, protected gimbals, has a whole set of buttons and dials that you can freely configure, detachable antennas, a high bright 1200 nits integrated seven inch screen, which is um, so good that you can even read it under bright daylight conditions in a desert without adding um, a monitor hood or shade. We also have a new bracket and harness um, with like a belly stand, so you can very conveniently hold it and operate the whole day without putting too much stress on your hands, your neck or your back. It also features uh, an external battery that you can hot swap, so you don't have to turn down the remote and uh, yeah, you see it's still running and you can hot swap it, pop a new one in, um, you can leave it on all day. Same goes for the, um, for the Inspire as well, so you can hot swap the batteries, slide one out, put another one in so you don't have to power down the whole system. What you cannot currently see but maybe up there, we have foldable props now. So you don't have to move the props anymore when you put it in a case. That's also very convenient and helps with the compact, uh, you know, ultra portable form factor. Maybe one of the biggest additions is um, we use our O3 Pro transmission system now. 
so the latest transmission technology from DJI that finally allows the gimbal operator and the pilot to be in separate places. So they don't have to stand right next to each other anymore like on the i2. There is no direct link between anymore. They have a dedicated separate link from the aircraft to the controller. So the pilot could be standing here while the gimbal operator stands at the end of the hall, or vice versa. So that's very easy and convenient now to work together on a set. Also, the new transmission technology supports um, the hybrid monitor, which is kind of a gateway to use the master wheels and the Ronin 4D hand grips. Now you can control the gimbal, not only with the remote controller, but you can use the master wheels and the Ronin 4D hand grips, which is very convenient and helpful. One other cool trick and new feature is we now reuse the Ronin 4D SSD, which has a huge benefit. It has a USB-C port, so you don't need an external card reader anymore on set. So you just uh, give this to the DIT. Uh, you can even leave it with them. Uh, they can copy um, and send it back on another day, but you don't have to give out your reader anymore, and you don't run into any issues with not having a reader. So this is a really cool trick. DITs and data wranglers absolutely love it. But there's one last thing I want to talk about, that's the integrated waypoint feature. So now you don't have to use any third-party apps anymore. We now have integrated waypoint features that make it very easy um, to program and execute fly paths and repeat them very precisely. We also support RTK um, to get centimeter level precision. Um, and with two internal GNSS antennas and a set of sensors, we don't have to rely on the internal compass anymore too much. So we heavily reduce compass uh, calibration needs. And we also have the big advantage that if you do a 180 degree pan with the gimbal, the horizon stays locked. So the gimbal operator doesn't have to compensate anymore. I would say those are the main upgrades, benefits from the i2 to the i3. And I can just tell you, if you use the i3 for a project, you would never want to go back to the i2. <laughs> There's also a ton of new other features I couldn't touch now because of the limited time. Uh, but uh, you can go to the DJI website, uh, look at that channel. There will be plenty of information you can look up and dive into.